Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone for joining us today. My name is Tim Begonis. I'm CMO here at DTools. And with me are Seth Enos, Product Manager for System Integrator, and Zach Patterson from Great America Financial. And we're gonna to talk today about how an integration between Great America Financial and DTool System Integrator can help commercial AV integrators offer AV as a service to their clients as part of their engagements. We appreciate uh, you taking time to uh, out of your day to meet with us today. So if you've done a webinar with us, um, very, very easy. We will do some presenting. And then we have a questions box where you can ask questions. We'll be monitoring this throughout the presentation. And then we will have a, a dedicated time at the end for proper Q&A if your questions are not answered in line. Um, and if you need more real estate to see the screen, go ahead and click the arrow in your control panel and that will uh, give you a bit more room. Okay, so what we'll cover today is we're really gonna talk about how commercial integrators can start offering managed services as part of their client engagements. We're calling this AV as a service, which is a term that's been used for the last couple of years. Um, and Zach from Great America will really, you know, help get into what that means and the benefits that it can offer for system integrators. Uh, we'll do a little background on DTools um, and Great America for those of you who may not be familiar with us. And again, we'll be doing Q&A, and this webinar will be recorded and distributed to everyone following the presentation. So a little bit about DTools. Uh, we've been in the industry for 25 years. We were founded in 1998 by Adam Stone, who was a, a systems integrator, and really uh, pioneered a way to tie uh, drawings to his bill of materials. Uh, he did this really to make his job easier. And we've grown over the years um, to be a, a platform that has helped thousands of system integrators streamline their business processes and really present um, very detailed documentation and, and help them deliver um, world-class experiences for their clients. Uh, we have a dedicated team. We're constantly looking to improve our solution. Uh, we just released version uh, 20 of System Integrator this month. And, you know, we, we really take pride in trying to deliver a best-of-breed application for our customers. So for those of you who may not be familiar with System Integrator, uh, this is a platform to really help you manage your business from end to end, primarily around system integration projects, whether you're in AV, commercial security, um, HVAC controls. We offer a platform that really helps you streamline everything from the initial sale through um, detailed system designs and documentation through project management and ongoing service. And we do this really through what we believe is a, is a world-class data-driven process that is derived from an integrated product library. Uh, we have a library of literally millions of SKUs from hundreds of manufacturers and suppliers. And this information really drives everything through our software so that we can provide um, our customers with the information they need to be able to specify systems, do very detailed system design, manage their proposals, and then manage the rest of that information throughout the installation and service of those projects. So from one single really bill of materials, um, all of your sales can be driven so that we enable you to offer very detailed proposals. The information we provide really helps track things like manufacturer model number, images, descriptions on the sales side, but then we also dive deeper and provide very detailed specifications such as dimensions, um, inputs and outputs, which can be leveraged to generate your drawings. So when you do a project in our system, you're able to organize things by location, by system, and then we're also tracking the time needed to install the product, which then you can apply your labor rates to. So as you're designing the system, 
we're generating a very accurate estimated install price. And because we're able to organize by location or by system or by phase of the project, that information flows through the rest of the job so that you can generate installation tasks for your product teams. Uh, you can create and manage service orders um, and service contracts so that everything around that project, that information from the beginning to the end is consistent. And then we have um, business intelligence built in so that you can run very detailed analytics, uh, job cost reporting, and really get an overall view of that project or those clients. So used in its entirety, our feature set really helps our customers uh, improve operational efficiency and increase profitability per project. So we've integrated with Great America Financial um, to help bring together how integrators can help their clients deliver AV as a service. Um, we have a very tight integration and I'd like to introduce Zach Patterson from Great America Financial, who's going to help um, explain a bit about AV as a service and how integrators can work with them to deliver those services. Zach. Thank you, Tim. Pleasure being here with everyone today. So nice to um, to meet everyone, Zach with Great America here, and, and Seth, if you want to go to the, the next slide, just a little bit about uh, about Great America. We've been been around for a little over 30 years. We're the, the largest privately held finance company in the, uh, in the United States, and we work with over 3,000 technology partners across uh, several different industries, IT, UC, AV, security, uh, the imaging channel, um, as well as a few other specialty markets. And... Um, Really, you know, at our core, what, what we are focused on doing here at Great America is um, it's helping commercial systems integrators sell more technology, more products and services through customized financial solutions. Uh, that could be um, something such as AV as a service or something as simple as uh, standard financing options. Uh, but really, when you think about any type of flexible payment or financial solution um, to offer your customers, that's where Great America uh, works to to support you uh, and your end users. So um, if you want to move to the next slide here, um, a little bit about um, if you're not familiar with AV as a service, what is it? Uh, a very simple level, folks, it's, it's an alternative consumption model for your customers. So when you think about historically how you've been selling, uh, likely been selling your projects and services as a large upfront expenditure, AV as a service is a way to convert that into a monthly payment structure and allow your customers to pay over over time for not only up the upfront project, but also any reoccurring services such as managed services, uh, maintenance or support plans. And as, as Tim already referenced, um, we have the, the integration with DTools and the partnership there because our mutual goal is, is to enable you as systems integrators to put these bundles together uh, and make it really easy to, to start offering uh, these options to your customers uh, in an effort to ultimately close more business. Um, so if you wanna move to the next slide here, why AV as a service? Um, you know, there's there's several reasons why. From from an integrator standpoint, uh, this is a great mechanism for you if you're struggling to sell services and and to automatically wrap in service bundles, um, you know, and sell those to your customers. It's a great way for you to start selling more services and, and guarantee those revenues over a three to five year uh, period and. And, and generate monthly recurring revenue. There's an opportunity for you to potentially reduce the sales cycle, you know, improve your close rates, and ultimately get to a faster yes uh, by giving your customers, again, those flexible options that we mentioned. So uh, another great benefit for, for from AV as a service is that it gives you an opportunity to stay stickier with your customer. Um, so there's a, there's a great path there for you to build repeat business and long-term client relationships, moving away from being somebody that's just a, uh, an equipment installer or an equipment provider to a true services provider that's, that's providing uh, managed services and ongoing support beyond the initial install. 
from the customer's perspective, there's a lot of reasons why a customer might be interested in AV as a service or a monthly payment. Um, one of the common reasons, right, is, is maybe your customer doesn't have the budget. They, they need help from a cash flow management perspective, and this gives them the ability to move away from a large upfront capital expenditure to an op- operating expense. You know, it also reduces the risk of technology obsolescence through regular updates. That's one of the, the benefits of that model is it, it, it creates a more consistent technology refresh schedule um, for you and your customers. And, you know, one reason that we don't really have up here, I've sort of already hinted at it, but customers sometimes, at least the more and more integrators that I talk to today, they're finding that that customers, organizations are wanting to move away from from owning equipment. Um, they don't really care about owning equipment anymore. They just want to use it. Uh, they want it to work. They want it to be easy, uh, and they want somebody else to take care of it and maintain it for them. And that's where you come in as the as the systems integrator. So, um, Seth, you can go ahead and go to the the next slide here. Um, wanted to just call out quickly a uh, common question that we get. What's the difference between AV as a service and a standard lease? Uh, well, it's it's really similar in the sense that uh, when you're working with Great America or a third party, uh, a finance company, it's the fixed term agreement. So typically the customer uh, signs a three-year, four-year, five-year agreement um, and that is, like I said, a fixed term, whether that's a lease or an AV as a service agreement, uh, the customer is obligated to, um, you know, stay stay under contract for that period of time. The finance company or the funding source, uh, Great America in this, this example, assumes all of that financial risk. So you as the systems integrator, you still get paid up front for the project, just like you normally would on a, on a, on a standard cash sale um, at Great America or the finance source assumes all of that financial risk in the event that the customer uh, doesn't, doesn't pay over the life of that agreement, just like a standard lease. Where it's a little bit different, it really comes down to two primary things. AV as a service is a rental of the equipment with no option to purchase. So the customer is truly renting the equipment. Uh, They don't have an option to own it at the end of that agreement. And AV as a service includes a maintenance or managed services uh, component that's bundled into a single monthly payment. So the idea, again, is that instead of asking your customer to pay you up front for a, say, $100,000 project and $5,000 a year for services, we wrap that into a single monthly payment uh, that they can easily budget for and, and manage over the next three to five years. Moving on to the next slide, um, how does that process work? So we're gonna we're gonna show the demo here in a second um, how to quote and leverage that integration. Uh, but just from a very high level, I'm sure you're probably wondering how do I get paid? When do I get paid? What does that process sort of look like? So we wanted to touch on that. It starts with the quoting and proposing to your customer. So within DTools System Integrator, um, you will be able to quote standard lease options or AVS service options to your customer. If you have a customer that's interested in moving forward, that's where you would engage Great America. You would reach out to us. You would provide the customer's name, their address, phone number. Um, Typically, a copy of your proposal is all that we need because we just need to know the customer's information as well as the funding amount and the equipment list um, for that project. Uh, We'll turn a decision back around to you typically within an hour. Um, So if it's a smaller project, um, under $100,000, say, uh, we're typically going to be getting a decision back to you within an hour. If it's over $100,000, it may take us half a day to get back to you uh, on something of that size. So let's assume that you've submitted that application over to us. Great America has approved the customer uh, for the AV as a service or the lease agreement. We would send an agreement over to the customer to get signed customer signs that agreement. We then have the ability, excuse me, we have the ability to mimic or mirror how you are paid on a cash sale. So many of the systems integrators that we work with typically require a deposit. Sometimes that's 50%, 75%, or maybe you have milestone billing, 40, 40, 20, 50, 40, 10, whatever that may look like. Uh, We have the ability to mirror that. And so just for modeling purposes in this example, let's say that you are getting a 50% uh, deposit from Great America customer signs the agreement, uh, you would send Great America an invoice, and then we would advance fund uh, that 50% deposit so that you can order your equipment and begin the 
installation. Uh, once the equipment's installed, we reach out to the customer to verify that. Uh, we just verify that the project's completed, the equipment's fully installed and working, uh, and then that allows us to pay you out the remaining 50% uh, balance. So again, from a very high level, that's sort of how the process would work. The one thing I want to point out is that there is really no interruption to how and when you are paid on a finance deal or as a service deal through Great America. Uh, you are paid upfront just like you normally would be for that project component. And so before we switch to uh, switch over to, to Seth here for the demo, I uh, just wanted to, to call out, you know, if you are interested in working with Great America, leveraging this integration, how would you get started? Uh, you can reach out to Max here, got his email. Uh, he'll be following up with, with you folks after this, uh, this webinar today. Uh, you would reach out to us. Get set up. There's a process. We just get you set up with a uh, dealer ID uh, in our system. Uh, we'd want to... I think have a have a conversation around building your ideal program. What options are you looking to offer to your customers? What terms? Uh, what does that process of a transaction look like? And what are your payment terms that you'd be expecting from Great America? Uh, and then we would provide that custom dealer key that we'll uh, we'll show here in a second uh, for you to enable the integration uh, with DTools. So uh, with that, I will turn things over to Seth here for the demo. All right. Thank you so much. Let me go ahead and bring the street up. Um, welcome, everyone. I am going to uh, give you a quick demonstration of how, um, while you're presenting your proposal to your clients, how you can provide them the Great America financing options. Um, as Zach mentioned, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, sign up with Great America um, to join them, you know, as as a partner uh, or as a client, I should say. And then inside of SI. Um, just real quickly, if you go to our control panel here, I'm going to take you down to our integration section. We have a lot of settings in here, but here's our integrations. And here you can see Great America. You'll simply open this, uh, tick a box to enable it, and then uh, paste in your dealer key that you received from Great America. And that's it. As soon as you do that, all the features have been activated. And then how this works is when you've created a proposal for a client, uh, that you want to present, um, whether it's just a standard lease option or if you're going to provide uh, them AV as a service options through a service contract or a line item in, in the proposal that is going to um, be a, a, a service agreement, um, you select your project. And when you're going to run a proposal report, which I'm going to take you right here to show you running a client report, I'll just do a, a proposal by location for this project. You'll notice down here at the bottom, you have the option to include Great America financing options. So um, after you've signed up with Great America, you're going to work with them to create um, what I believe are called rate cards. And you're about to see one of those. When I click run and close here, it's going to getting your rate card uh, or rate card or cards from Great America. And I will um, choose a few options here, but I'm going to let Zach speak to what these actually do. Um, and I'll just click those and let sure. him take over on this. Yep, I can take it away. Thanks, Seth. So um, a dollar buyout lease is a lease to own. So if your customer is interested in owning the equipment at the end of their agreement, um, that would be the best option to propose to them. And then FMV stands for fair market value. If you're not familiar with that, fair market value is a lower payment than the dollar buyout. Um, and what that does is that creates a decision point at the end of the agreement for the customer where they have to decide if they wanted to purchase the equipment, uh, buy it out, upgrade it through you as the systems integrator, replace it, um, return it back to Great America, or continue uh, month to month beyond the agreement. So uh, where dollar buyout makes the most sense, you know, one of the questions that typically comes down to from my end that when I'm working with different systems integrators is, does the customer want to own that equipment or do they want to use it uh, and have a, have a refresh plan? If they want to own it, dollar buyout makes the most sense. If they want to use it, have a refresh plan, fair market value is a good vehicle there. Uh, number down is for the number of payments down. So if you, for some reason, wanted your customer to make one or two payments in advance, you would select that one or two option. I can tell you about 98% of the time, uh, we 
our, our partners are doing zero down because it's just easier, right? To not have to collect anything from them and say, hey, sign here and your first payment's due in, in 30 days. Uh, the term, uh, you can see over here, 12, 24, all the way through 63, that is in months. So uh, we can offer anything 12 to 63 months. I would say that the most common terms that we see in, in, in this industry is 36, 48, and 60 months, typically because that is in line with the uh, lifespan or the usable life of the equipment. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out too, just quickly before I turn it back over to Seth, is at the very top, you'll notice points, and that's uh, at zero. Um, there is an, a, an opportunity for you if you wanted to add uh, points uh, into uh, the deal uh, on a finance deal through Great America, you could do that. Uh, that is just added margin. So one point is essentially 1%, two points, 2%, and so on. Um, so that is something if you wanted to either um, get a, a little commission back to your business, or maybe you wanted to, to pay out a sales rep or a seller to incentivize them to push AV as a service or finance options with their customers, uh, you would have the ability to do that there. And that's certainly something that if you reach out to Great America and start that conversation around building your, your program, uh, we can can have a discussion around. Excellent. Thank you for that explanation, Thank, Zach. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I just want to interject here that in this part of the process, um, you've already added everything to your proposal. You've organized by location. You've organized by system. So this is really then the last step in when you're going to present how the customer um, would pay for it. So I know we jumped right into this part, but we're assuming you've already created your, your proposal, you've organized everything, and now you're just in the final um, presentation stage for your customer. Right on, thank you for that. Um, what I did here is when I clicked uh, calculate, this brought up uh, the two options that are selected in the previous screen. You may see more than that depending on your options here, but you can choose a maximum of four to offer your clients. Uh, you can also move these up and down in this list if you want them in a particular order. Um, I'll just select the two that came up here, choose select. And now this is gonna generate the uh, SI proposal and right towards the very end, you're going to see your payment options. Here's the report, and we'll skip right here towards the last page of this report. Down here, you can see this is the part of the report that was created specifically for the Great America Integration, where you'll see the word payment options. Um, it's a quick little message here for your uh, clients, letting them know that the prices are exclusive of tax, and the two options that you just saw on the previous screen, uh, and again, based on your rate card settings. Um, what I will tell you here um, is that all of this text is customizable, or I should say most of this text is customizable, so you will not have to create a custom report. Uh, if you want to change this title here, this text, or what you're calling the options. And just to show that very quickly, under your report settings and uh, system integrator, we have a Great America section here. And there you can see the sections I just spoke about, uh, where if you wanted to change these to customize that, to make it look better for your clients, or what would make sense to them, this is where you can do that without having to customize a report. And that is really how easy it is to generate options, financing options, I should say, from Great America to your clients. And at this point, I think it's time to open this up for Q&A. Okay, well, thanks. Um, quick question then. So once the customer has agreed and you've got the signed proposal, what is the next step in the process? What does the integrator do? Um, and how does he get that over to Great America? Yep. So, so I can I can take that one. That would be, uh, let's say the customer signed your proposal and they've indicated they want to move forward with AV as a service or a leasing option. Uh, that would be the point where you would you would reach out to Great America to submit the credit application. So uh, when you think back to that process slide that I showed, it was that second step there. <clears throat> and um, all you would do is you would reach out to your Great America representative with a copy of the proposal. Uh, again, just indicating what the customer's name, address, and phone number is, as well as the uh, equipment details and the uh, dollar amount of the project. So that is all that you would need to provide with us, uh, provide to us. And that would be, like I said, you would, you would get set up with, whether that's myself or another member of the Great America team here, you'd get a dedicated representative that you would reach out to, um, to that information with. 
Great, great, thanks. Um, and I, I see a question here. So what, you know, what advice would you give to integrators who, who would like to start offering uh, these services to their customers? So I would advise having a conversation with us around what your goals are, what you're looking to accomplish with offering payment options to your customers. Uh, better understanding, you know, is this, are you, are you having a lot of customers that are that are running into budget constraints? Um, are you having a lot of customers that are maybe interested in the as a service model and you've never known how to package it all up and position it to them, right? So having that conversation around what is it that you're looking to do? What is the need that you're trying to solve for within your marketplace? And then building that offering uh, that is customized that that ultimately fits what you're trying to do. So that would be my recommendation uh, starting there. And then from the standpoint of going out there and positioning it, selling it, that's where Great America can help. Uh, but we always recommend or advise to offer this to every single customer that you work with. Um, we find that the more our partners quote a payment option, the more often they close a sale that way. So just kind of by the law of averages, right? The more times you offer it out there, you put it out there and make your customers aware that the option exists, um, you may have, you may find that, you know, you have a customer that maybe you thought would never be interested in financing or never be interested in AV as a service, but they saw that option on your proposal and it helped you close that deal faster. Great. And so do you help the integrators understand how to position this and how to make that shift um, with their sales teams on how to get comfortable um, selling services as part of their, their, their projects if it's new to them? We sure do. Yep. That's one of the things that we can help with is the sales enablement uh, training and, and working uh, di directly with uh, the sales team uh, to, like you said, get them more comfortable with having these conversations with their customers uh, and, and, and really identifying and qualifying which customers are a fit for as a ser AV as a service and which customers are not a fit or not interested based on what they are looking to do and how they're looking to consume uh, their technology and services from you as the systems integrator. Great. Yeah. I, one of the things that I've heard is that, that some of the integrators have, you know, kind of had some challenges getting their, their sales teams on board. And um, what are some of the challenges that you've seen or you've maybe helped integrators uh, kind of overcome when they're making this shift? Yeah, and so that's where it, it is hard, right? It's 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 asking a, a team to change the way that they've always sold, and 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 changing behavior is hard, right? It's hard for everybody, um, no matter what it is that we're trying to do. Um, one of the things that I've worked with several teams on is changing um, compensation plans. So um, I have several systems integrators that I work with that have actually changed the uh, sales comp plans. They compensate their, their sales reps uh, more for selling an AV as a service or, or selling a service contract. Right. So that's one thing, um, you know, but I think it's different integrator by integrator case by case. Uh, but, but where, where we can sort of help there is just having a, a deeper discussion around what are the actual issues that are going on? Where are we seeing resistance uh, from the team? And, and, and at the end of the day, there, there has to be buy-in, right? Because as a seller, if you don't believe in what you're selling, then you're not going to probably have very much success, right? So we, we can help there with again, changing, at least advising or giving ideas or recommendations on changes that you can make within your business uh, to, to drive that behavior change. Great. That, 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 that's a really good, you know, advice and feedback. Um, have you seen, are there particular types of projects that lend themselves better to this model or really are you seeing that um, maybe a shift that, that really this just becomes part of every project? You know, that's a really good question. Um, we have, I would love to say that there is a specific vertical or type of customer that we've seen this, um, you know, be a good fit for, but I, I can't really, I can't really do that. Um, I mean, we've, we've, 
I've, I've financed projects within the last six months for Fortune 500 companies, and I've financed them for, you know, that small nonprofit or small business mom and pa shop down the street, right? So I think it just, from that end, it kind of goes back to making sure that you are presenting these options to your customers, making them aware that they exist. Because at the end of the day, it's not your customer's job to ask for these options. It's your job to tell tell them, right, that they're available. Um, so that would just, I think, be the biggest thing is, is, is you know, continue to quote, 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 and, and have that conversation uh, to figure out how your customer wants to, to buy from you. What about it? Would would you say that there's a minimum kind of project size that that works best for this, or you think that really, you know, yeah, it can be part of of really just any any commercial integrators go to market, or is there a, a threshold? I guess. Yeah, I, I would Tim, say. I think I think it can be a part of any commercial integrators um, go to market. Our minimum transaction size at Great America that we would we would finance for a, a project is three thousand dollars. Um, so believe it or not, yeah, it's very low. Believe it or not, uh, we do we do deals that are, you know, five thousand, ten thousand uh, dollars a lot. We do a lot of those um, in the in the AV and security space. I think our average transaction size is around sixty thousand dollars for perspective. So um, a little bit larger in in this industry, um, but we we do plenty of of small ticket uh, transactions. No, well, that's great. That's great to hear because I, I'm sure some, you know, some some of our audience out there might be thinking, well, this is this is only for the super big jobs and not for us. And um, really being being able to offer services to your clients um, really helps build in that that lifetime customer. Um, and um, this is a this is really a, a just a great way for companies to make that switch. Uh, in my opinion, if they haven't been able to do so previously. Uh, all right, so we have a couple questions here. Um, Zach, can both uh, a $1 BO and FMB be set up as a rental or AVS? ABAS? Yes, they can. So that would be something that when you reach out and engage Great America around setting up your AV as a service program, we would we would have a conversation or dive into um, what you want to have uh, happen at the end of term with that equipment. Um, so there's a couple of different, there's pros and cons to leveraging each type of option um, for your rental uh, rental agreement to the customer. And so the answer to that question is yes, we can we can use either one to build out an AV as a service program, but we would we would have a conversation around what it, again, what it is that you're looking to accomplish, what you want to have happen at the end, uh, and then put those options in place so that when you go to uh, run that report and quote those on each, each proposal that you're, that you're running, uh, the correct options are populating and ultimately being uh, presented to a end, end customer. Great, thanks. Um, on a technical side, um, what other what other challenges um, do you do you see um, integrators having to overcome when implementing this for their for their customers? Is it is it really just on the sales side, or have you seen um, larger organizational changes that need to to need to happen? You know, that's an interesting question. Um, I do think the sales piece is, is a big one, right? There has to be buy-in, it has to be adoption from the sales team. And that's typically, of course, pushed down from, from leadership, right? Um, that, hey, we are changing the direction that we want to go as an organization. Um, another piece that I would, that, that I would point out is um, the services, right? So you have to be able to the, sell the value of the services that you are providing to your clients. Um, I, I work with a lot of systems integrators that tell me that they rarely sell services or they try to, but they can't get their customers to, to sign up for them or to, to enter into that three-year support agreement. So that's another thing, um, being able to 
position the services component properly, uh, because if you can sell the value of the services, that's going to make it easier to convert your customer to the AV as a service uh, or leasing model. Yeah, and that's a that's a great point, and that's really an area where the integration between our, our you know between Great America and SI um, can really be leveraged because within SI you you can define you can create and define service plans. Um, so you can create what goes into the service plan. You can um, really describe the services that you're going to deliver um, and put a price to it. Um, and then add add the financing piece at the end so that it's not just a matter of um, how it's going to be paid, but really getting in there and defining the services you're going to offer. And then I think from that perspective, integrators will get more comfortable adding service to every every proposal and then being more comfortable presenting the, the as a service option for for all of their client engagements. Thanks everyone for joining us and have a great day.